Yeah. Good evening to you all. You are all welcome to the uh, session on ethnography, ethnography, and digital ethnography. Uh, I am Dr. Pedrataya Gadde, um, uh, uh, the founder general secretary of Anthropological Association for Humankind. And we have created a virtual institute called International Institute of, uh, of Anthropological Applications. Uh, we have initiated uh, the first uh, uh, training course on uh, digital ethnography for tribal sustainable livelihoods in cooperation uh, uh, with uh, Professor S. B. Royser from Ibrod, the founder chairman of Ibrod. Uh, we are very glad to have him uh, here as our mentor and coach and uh, trainer uh, for this uh, entire course. And uh, I do uh, bring uh, uh, some uh, sessions. I do present some sessions on theoretical aspects of ethnography and methods and principles in, in practice and, uh, and uh, digital ethnography uh, to make you understand uh, what is digital ethnography and how we do it uh, in the field. When, uh, and, uh, to understand the broader concepts uh, of uh, and the key jargon and the concepts uh, that come under uh, digital ethnography, under the umbrella of digital ethnography. Uh, what are the key aspects uh, that we need to understand before we undertake uh, digital ethnography uh, in the uh, tribal, uh, um, with the tribals uh, on the uh, internet mediated spaces. Yeah, uh, now I will start my presentation on ethnography, ethnography and digital uh, ethnography. <clears throat> the objectives of this presentation is uh, to make you understand, or uh, if you already know oh, what is ethnography, to help you to remind uh, the basic uh, uh, concepts called what, what is ethnography? What are the principles of ethnographic practice? And uh, and uh, what is ethnography? Uh, what are the principles of uh, ethnographic practice? Um, what is digital ethnography? What are the principles of uh, digital ethnographic practice? These are the fundamental questions. Uh, 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 a curious uh, student, uh, um, first uh, these questions will come to our mind. So uh, this presentation will help you understand the subtle differences between ethnography, uh, ethnography and uh, uh, digital ethnography. Ethnography is about telling a credible, rigorous, and authentic story. Ethnography gives voice to people in their own local context, typically relying on verbatim quotations and a, think, uh, and a thick description of events. The story is told through the eyes of local people as they pursue their daily lives in their own communities. The ethnographer adopts a cultural lens to interpret observed behavior, ensuring that the behaviors are placed in a culturally relevant and meaningful context. The ethnographer is focused on the predictable daily patterns of human thought and behavior. Ethnography is thus both a research method and a product, typically written text. What is the mindset of an ethnographer? An ethnographer uh, have the the the, the uh, uh, his mindset consists of uh, towards the local people group which he is uh, going to study. So he wants to understand the world uh, from the native's point of view. Uh, he wants to know what uh, the native people know in the way they know it, and he wants to an ethnographer wants to understand the meaning of. Uh, local people's experiences. And uh, an ethnographer uh, want to walk in the shoes of the native people. Uh, he wants to feel things as they feel. He wants to explain things uh, as they explain them. So uh, these, uh, these are the principles uh, 
um, the attitudes um, towards uh, the local people, how an ethnographer ha keeps a kind of a mindset. The ethnographer enters the field uh, with an open mind, uh, not an empty head. I repeat, the ethnographer enters the field with an open mind, not an empty head. Before asking the first question in the field, the ethnographer begins with a problem, a theory or model, a research design, specific data collection techniques, tools for analysis, and a specific writing style. Ethnographer has the freedom of choice of what problem to study, which geographic area or people group to study. So he has the freedom in these areas. Uh, quality, uh, ethnographer uh, has uh, quality controls in, mind, in his mind, uh, in, uh, such as the method of triangulation, contextualization, and uh, non-judgmental orientation. Triangulation uh, means, triangulation is a technique to analyze results of the same study using different methods of data collection. It is used for three main purposes, to enhance validity, to create a more in-depth picture of a research problem, and to in, interrogate different ways of understanding a, uh, understanding <clears throat> a research problem. Most often, triangulation helps to validate research findings by checking that different methods or different observers of the same phenomenon produce the same results. It can also be used to interrogate inconsistencies and the data that are not expected to align. The methodological framework used determines how the degree of overlap between methods is conceptualized. Researchers look for three types of triangulation, convergence, com complementarity, and divergence. These are the three uh, methods, uh, types of triangulation. Convergence in indicates there is a strong degree of overlap and accuracy between the data sets collected using different methods. Complementarity builds a, a richer picture of the research results by allowing the results from different methods to inform each other. Whereas divergence presents a different set of challenges within the methods and how it is interpreted depends on the conceptual framework for the research. Divergence can either indicate the methods or the results are flawed or be treated as a new data and analyzed to look for new insights. So this is a brief uh, uh, explanation for triangulation. Um, a, a, an ethnographer, when he enters the field, he carries along with him the quality controls such as triangulation, the contextualization, contextualization uh, is um, uh, the language, the words the local people use, uh, the meanings uh, uh, should be interpreted in the context of the incidents and the local cultural context and the local env environment. The same words or the same symbols or the same gestures can be different from uh, when we uh, see those things in other culture. So contextualization means the symbols, the gestures, the words, the tools, uh, the methods the local people use uh, for their living or for their, uh, to, to explain or to interpret or to give meaning. All those things uh, should be in the context of their uh, um, uh, local con cultural and environmental context. So uh, if we miss this uh, quality control, we may miss the, the major part of the uh, ethnographic uh, uh, output. So triangulation and uh, contextualization and uh, uh, a non-judgmental orientation. So uh, we should not carry the ethnocentric attitudes, um, uh, which is greater culture, which is good culture, which is bad culture. No, 
that kind of uh, the judgmental attitudes we should forsake uh, uh, an ethnographer mindset uh, is uh, a non judgmental um, he carries a non judgmental attitude uh, towards uh, the he he enters uh, the field with an open mind and uh, but not with an empty mind um, empty head um but he carries with him in his head uh, the different uh, uh quality control uh, tools uh, methods triangulation contextualization and non judgmental orientation place to check on the negative influence of bias what do ethnographers do people's actions and accounts are studied in everyday context rather than under conditions created by the researcher such as uh, in uh, experimental setups or uh, in highly structured interview situations in other words research takes place in the field data are gathered uh, from a range of uh, sources including documentary evidence of various kinds but uh, participant observation uh, and or relatively uh, informal conversations are usually the main ones ethnographers uh, the uh, the data collection is for the most part relatively unstructured in two senses first uh, it does not involve following through a fixed on the detailed research design specified at the start second the categories that are used for uh, interpreting what people say or are do are not built into the data collection process through the use of observation schedules or questionnaires instead they are gathered out of the process of data analysis uh, the focus of, is usually on few cases generally fairly small uh, scale perhaps a single uh, setting of a single setting or group of people this is to facilitate in depth study to the, the the analysis of data involves interpretation of the meanings of functions and consequences of human actions and institutional practices and how these are implicated in local and perhaps also wider context what are produced for the most part are verbal descriptions explanations and theories quantification and the statistical analysis plays a subordinate role at most what do ethnographers do the task of an ethnographer is to discover the world view of the people under study to describe interpret analyze and write about their sayings doings and beings in order to constitute uh, the uh, uh, oh, let me repeat the task of an ethnographer is to discover the world view of the uh, people under study to describe interpret analyze and write about their sayings doings and beings continuities continuities and changes in order to present the wholesome account so uh, the ethnographer's uh, uh, job uh, the is to discover the world view uh, why ethnography ethnography occupies such an important uh, uh, field um, uh, of uh, uh, enterprise uh, for an anthropologist uh, anthrop uh, because uh, what people say and what people do and what people say they do uh, from time to time uh, it changes so um, inconsistent inconsistent inconsistencies and contradictions if we say uh, you said the something but you are doing altogether different thing but uh, if i ask you why you say something and do something else and you say what you do is again a, a, another contradiction so no 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 i want to come to your house i want to come to your your area i want to come to see what exactly happens uh, on the ground reality so uh, that's why the um, 
uh, people tell many lies. Uh, if they want to please the uh, audience, they want to say something which may not be true. In reality, it may it may be something else. So ethno ethnography, uh, ethnographical uh, the uh, participant observation, ethnographic field work. This is the uh, uh, invention of anthropology. Anthropology has introduced uh, this ethnographic uh, uh, tradition or uh, practice uh, because they study people. Anthropologists study people. Uh, holistically uh, from all aspects. That is why the uh, anthropologists seek truth about uh, what people say, what people do, what people are really as human beings, what their being itself communicates, their existence, their influence on the community, on the family, on the wider society, how it makes a difference. That's what exactly anthropology is. Uh, how, because, because, of, because lack of integrity, people say uh, one thing and people say, uh, people do something else and people say uh, what they do uh, they, uh, uh, differently. So all these inconsistencies and lack of integrity uh, uh, gives a lot of a bad uh, info, the, uh, a lot of a, uh, troublesome information. If we publish that information with lots of uh, the uh, lies and a lot of inconsistencies and uh, incongruencies and a lot of uh, uh, self-contradictions and all those things, no? Uh, that's why one hour interview or two hours interview uh, may give us some information, but uh, that information may be true or may not be true also or portion of information. That's why ethnographic uh, um, uh, participant observation or field work is the uh, central, uh, central activity of uh, the anthropologists. Um, when they create knowledge, when they uh, propose theories, and uh, when they come up with applications, when they want to address the contemporary issues, um, that's where anthropologists, uh, the discipline, anthropology as a discipline, anthropologists as a professional ethnographers and uh, field workers and participant observers who stay long periods of time uh, with people and uh, the, uh, struggling with the issues and uh, what exactly they, they are the, truth finders and the fact finders, and uh, they, they investigate the truth about what people say, what people do, what people actually are as a human being. Who are they? Who are you is an important question. So those are the uh, philosophical, philosophical underpinnings, and uh, these are the um, major motivations. Uh, we are the investigator of the integrity. We are the investigators of truth about a human, uh, what people, the, about the human's sayings and the doings. Doings means uh, all the human creations uh, and all the workings. Uh, whatever people do, uh, all the, um, the patterns of uh, different uh, human creations. Uh, all those things come under doings. And being, as a human being, what kind of being you are, uh, kind of uh, the wholesome message what you are communicating uh, as a being. So um, the task of an ethnographer is to discover the worldview of the people under study to describe explain, interpret, analyze, and write about their sayings, doings, and beings, continuities and discontinuities, uh, to, in order to present the wholesome account of the people group under study. That is the task of an ethnographer. So uh, he, he carries the tools with him, methods with him, a bundle of methods, uh, and uh, to discover uh, the uh, the worldview of the people under study. Uh, I have already they came up with uh, the human competencies of framework to discover the worldview. Uh, in that uh, worldview, the, I have identified um, cognitive domain, affective domain, evalu evaluative domain, capability domain, and reflective and conscientious domain. 
These are the five domains uh, a worldview consists. So there are different layers of the worldview, different domains, uh, spheres of worldview. So in, in each sphere or in each domain of the worldview, uh, the uh, in the cognitive domain, uh, what we find out uh, when we, uh, as an ethnographer, when we enter the uh, religion, uh, the, uh, the community or people group, we want to find out the cognitive domain. What is there? already uh, ongoing in the cognitive domain of the people group under study. What, what exactly you mean by the cognitive domain? Cognitive domain uh, carries the uh, consists of um, the ways of thinking and reasoning. People's ways of thinking and reasoning. Cognitive uh, domain consists of fundamental mental constructs, categories and logic. For example, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, people who believe in Hinduism, um, the beliefs of Hindus, uh, Brahmins speak of devas, God. Brahman means God. Uh, Rakshasas uh, means demons. And the karma uh, means uh, the cosmic law of good and evil that punishes gods, humans, animals, and it determines their future lives, the karma, and the samsara, the cycle of rebirths, and moksha, salvation. So, the uh, why I'm giving these examples uh, the, 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 in the cognitive domain, how the, uh, the time sensor, their uh, the category of time, how they have a circular uh, timing. So rebirth, re uh, so that it is, uh, it goes on and on on. So uh, for some other culture, uh, in their cognitive domain, uh, the the reasoning of timing, time, the conception of time may be linear. Uh, for uh, Hindus, it is uh, circular. So um, the cognitive domain consists of the ways of thinking, the habits of thinking, the principles of the reasoning, the logic. Um, the mental constructs, the categories. So the belief system, these are, these comes under the cognitive domain of the worldview, whereas uh, affective domain uh, of the worldview of the people under study consists uh, of what are their deep feelings of joy, sorrow, fear, revulsion, awe, worship, taste in music, art, dress, food, architecture, notions of beauty and style and aesthetics. All this comes under the affective domain of the worldview. So their emotions, uh, their emotional quotient or uh, uh, EQ, uh, we are try to understand uh, what are the um, emotions, uh, how do they um, react, they, uh, how do they, uh, kind of uh, so the uh, under affective domain their feelings emotions uh, uh, the, uh, which um, guide their uh, reactions and reactions pattern uh, are studied so the third as uh, the domain of the worldview is evaluated domain uh, ways of judging and deciding notions of virtue morals manners criteria to determine truth and falsehood. So what are the criterion provided by the local people group under study to determine what is truth and what is false according to them? And uh, what are their likes and dislikes, uh, right and wrong, standards to make uh, judgments, what is beautiful or ugly, what is good or bad, what is true or false? So. So under this uh, evaluative domain, uh, uh, they carry the evaluative resources along with them. That uh, evaluative resources uh, we want to discover so that we, we can have a, a meaningful explanation uh, and a description and inter interpretation to find the truth about the local uh, people, and, uh, uh, what they say and why they say, the way they say what they do, why they do, the way they do, what they believe, why they believe, the way they believe, 
And all those things can be systematically uh, uh, described and explained. When we understand the uh, evaluative domain and affective domain and cognitive, how they react, why they react the way they react, what do they love, what do they hate, uh, if at all if they hate something, why do they hate that, that particular thing and that kind of things. So what are their belief system? What is the logical uh, logics of uh, their reasoning, the logic and the habits of their thinking, the habits of their emotions, the habits of their uh, judgments, uh, decisions. And after that, uh, how do, what are the competencies, capability resources they have already acquired? Why those competencies are already in place and what are the competencies, the list of competencies they do have and uh, those competencies are serving what purposes. So how, what are the competencies they have acquired? How, how do they acquire and why do they acquire? And what are the uh, services rendered by the acquired competencies uh, by the local uh, people under study? And uh, again, um, their worldview, the, uh, there is a reflective and conscientious domain, uh, which is uh, um, uh, very important to understand. Uh, <clears throat> uh, when uh, the local beliefs uh, and uh, inform something for them, the local beliefs prescribe values, local beliefs prescribe uh, uh, sanct set of sanctions, norms, values, all those things are prescribed by the uh, belief system or uh, they carry. So when, they believe, when their beliefs inform and interpret their world, their happenings, their experiences uh, differently from the actual uh, reality they encounter uh, in the day-to-day -day, uh, um, situations, if, the reality, if their experiences with the reality and in the, the uh, interpretation of the reality by the uh, already existing belief system. So how these, uh, the crisis or the gap, or the trouble they face uh, deep inside their worldview uh, happens, how do they address it? That's where they reflect to the uh, thoughtful, insightful, philosophical journey, uh, meaning seeking journey. When they encounter discomforts, when they en encounter uh, the chronic uh, disease or chronic poverty, a uh, chronic violation of their uh, uh, rights or uh, whatever uh, the discomforts they face, uh, in the face of discomforts, in the face of death, in the face of uh, um, um, troubles or pestilences, whatever. So they, they give careful uh, thoughtful, uh, insightful, philosophical, way, weighty ways of questioning, ways of meaning seeking, ways of meaning making, um, uh, identifying the troubling gaps, uh, responding to the situations and experiences. The journey begins. That's where the journey of uh, meaning seeking. They, they are, even they are not comfortable uh, with the experiences. They, they are looking, they aspire for better meaning. Uh, when they are discomfortable with the existing belief system, they aspire for better comforts, better uh, meaning, better dignity, better freedom, better uh, the competencies uh, to overcome the obstacles, the problems, the persecution, uh, whatever the sad and bad experiences they have. So that's where the worldview crisis comes into existence. That's where reflective and conscientious domain of the worldview plays a key role uh, in uh, looking for change aspiring for change and waiting for change and asking questions and uh, framing the questions, uh, uh, careful, thoughtful, insightful, uh, making many consultations and discussions and expressions and uh, coining the words and creating the uh, different things. All these things come at, at this uh, um, uh, domain. This is the more, uh, the, uh, at this uh, level, um, the uh, human beings are very soft and uh, they look for better meaning, uh, better life, and uh, they, their aspirations are uh, really uh, 
if the local existing belief is uh, suppressing their aspirations and uh, uh, they, they are discomfortable uh, with the experience that they have, then they come up with um, um, a trend setting, creating the new meaning and creating new trends. That's where uh, within the culture, within the, uh, uh, the same tradition or belief system, the reformers are coming up, the change agents are coming up. Who, how do that happen? That is the curious question. When ethnographer back in his mind carries, what are the continuities and discontinuities? How changes are happening? Um, they study from inside and outside. What are the contributing factors uh, from outside for the local changes? What are the contributing discomforts that uh, local people uh, have the, with the experience that they do, they, they undergo? Uh, and out of that, uh, what are the new uh, things they come up? So what are the continuous discontinuities? All these things. So uh, finally, uh, these are the five important domains we want to uh, understand about the culture uh, entire culture is organized, governed, controlled, even a, a new, adapting the new changes or uh, technology that uh, world we has the control at the cognitive level, effective level, evaluative level, uh, they, they reject, but at the same time, at the reflect, reflective level, at the uh, capability level, uh, at the reflective level, they uh, adapt, um, uh, they at the capability uh, uh, competencies level, they, they, they um, acquire the required competencies to, uh, to create the better uh, environment, better future, better life for them. So uh, once uh, th this is, uh, this is the, the task of uh, an ethnographer, according to my understanding, uh, so uh, when an ethnographer enters, uh, it is not that uh, he enters uh, um, uh, only um, with open mind. At the same time, he, he has a problem to investigate, a problem to study. So ethnographic research begins with the selection of a problem or a topic of interest. The research problem that the ethnographer chooses uh, guides the entire research endeavor. Uh, it uh, typically uh, dictates the shape of the research design, including the budget, the tools to conduct the research, and even the presentation of the research findings. How the ethnographer interprets and defines the problem usually reflects uh, either a basic or an applied research orientation. Uh, some people, uh, they have the applied aspect orientation. They want to study a problem, a social problem or economic problem or a cultural uh, problem or the uh, political problem. And then they uh, start their uh, research. Some people, they, uh, they just uh, uh, are not applied oriented, but uh, the academic oriented. So they go and study and come back and they produce knowledge. So uh, anyway, the problem may be, uh, the, the problem may also suggest the most appropriate research approach, ethnographic survey or experimental. The problem, the research problem uh, plays the vital role uh, in uh, developing the uh, tools and techniques and, uh, and methods and all these things. So, uh, in ethnographer, uh, <clears throat> humanities and uh, sciences a continuum in anthropological fieldwork. We know fieldwork is the, uh, the uh, participant observation and fieldwork uh, is uh, the heart of the ethnography. Um, uh, before we enter the field, before we enter the field site, we have a research problem and uh, we develop uh, some questionnaires and we develop, we have some data collecting tools and techniques and all those things so we get ready and we enter the field with open mind at the same time with the research problem and uh, uh, anthropological field work. And uh, regarding this, uh, there is a continuum, um, uh, the humanities and sciences, uh, which way or both. Uh, that kind of, uh, some anthropologists uh, think that uh, anthropological fieldwork is an art. Some, some uh, 
people think that it is scientific uh, uh, fervor should be there as uh, scientific and uh, they, some people say no 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 both should be there humanities and uh, it means uh, it is an art at this as well as it is a science both the things uh, should be combined uh, in the anthropological field work uh, that's what people think. So humanity is a fieldwork as an art. Traditionally, the self-image of an anthropologist has been that of a humanities uh, and scientists, uh, <clears throat> humanists and scientists. Traditionally, let me repeat, traditionally the self-image of an anthropologist has been that of humanists and scientists and they did not see any necessary contradiction between the two approaches. Eric Wolf is famous for his assertion that anthropology is bridging. Anthropology is a bridging discipline between the sciences and the humanities. I repeat, Eric Wolf is famous for his assertion that anthropology is a bridging discipline between the sciences and humanities and his observation after Kroeber that anthropology has been a bond between subject matters in part history, a part uh, literature, in part natural science, part social science, and it strives to study men Uh, from within and without, the most scientific of the humanities and the most humanistic of sciences. This uh, conception of a dual nature of anthropology was described by Hart's, Harten's uh, powder maker in her uh, classic fieldwork account, Stranger and Friend. In in these terms, there are some anthropology who rather arbitrarily reserve the label scientific for non-humanistic studies. A scientific attitude ignores no level of understanding. If the dual nature of anthropology, an art and a science, a humanistic science is accepted, there is no reason why each cannot be expanded the inherent ambiguities of this approach are only a reflection of those which exist uh, in life itself. <clears throat> so uh, the humanist, anthropology as a humanistic uh, orientation, they want to improve the humans, lives of the humans. And uh, scientific, uh, they want to uh, apply the scientific uh, um, uh, methods uh, to study. And the, between the qualitative, between the humanistic and the scientific, between the, um, the qualitative and the quantitative, subjective and uh, uh, objective. And uh, participant, I mean, uh, uh, we participate to, in the lives of the people in the, uh, in the community life uh, 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 to find out the insider's view, emic view. Uh, as an observer from outside the culture, uh, uh, we, um, uh, we try to bring objectivism, uh, objective things. So, and also postmodern and positive and empiricism. So, uh, we are more concerned about the local people's some definitions, some meanings, and uh, their uh, local individual and uh, the informants' perspectives. That's what uh, is important. At the same time, positivism, empiricism, uh, uh, we try to bring. So it is a continuum. Uh, so uh, balance uh, and... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, can be uh, brought. So <clears throat> where do anthropological imaginations uh, springs from? So anthropologists, they exercise uh, their imagination. Uh, out of this imagination, they're creative, they're strategic, they're sustaining all the um, uh, skills they uh, have, uh, they produce the knowledge. So 
ethnography brings a micro analysis of the uh, people under study, whereas the ethnology, cross cultural comparison, macro analysis brings uh, uh, the uh, different uh, um, uh, uh, understandings of the, how the universal uh, uh, level uh, principles can be brought. Uh, <clears throat> Um, and uh, differences, particularizing. Um, uh, we uh, particularizing. Uh, uh, we we uh, bring the local people's uh, uniqueness uh, and uh, what are the differences. Uh, what are the uh, uh, local context uh, brings and communicates. Whereas uh, the in the uh, uh, similarities on uh, the broader level, we bring sim we see similarities among different uh, cultures of the world people's groups of the worldwide uh, human planet. So uh, why we bring similarities uh, to generalize, to generalize uh, what uh, what we generalize about the human principle uh, nature about the human nature uh, and uh, human acquisition and uh, the human change. Or what are the contexts of people expect change? How do, why do they change? All those things, um, the human's acceptance and what are the universal principles of human acceptance? What are the human principles of human rejection? And what are the universal principles of human uh, the affection and uh, the love and uh, the structure of the belief, the structure of the um, attitudes, uh, the, what are the universal common things. For example, committing a murder, is it evil or good? What are the in, uh, cultures of the world uh, saying? And uh, the uh, local culture and uh, the universe of different. So human, so we try to particularize, uh, particularizing the local ethnographic account at the same time, when different ethnographic accounts are brought to, uh, to uh, to one place and uh, we uh, are different accounts uh, of human uh, li uh, lives and cultures. So when we see there, we come up with uh, generalizations about the human nature and the principles of human behavior and how cultures change and uh, how technologies emerge and how innovations are uh, and the new things are in innovated and all these things uh, can be explained uh, uh, reasonably. So synchronic, the ethnographic present and the diachronic, the historical, long-term uh, long uh, perspective. We bring a, a present and a, a what is the historical context so that, so that uh, we can uh, have a comprehensive picture of the local culture and uh, human behavior. And the humanism, and the participant, um, uh, we participate as a humans. We study humans. We are human being as a human, not as a machine. Uh, we, uh, we participate uh, as a human uh, to study humans uh, and uh, to bring out uh, the uh, local uh, interpretations. Uh, at the same time, observer uh, to bring object to uh, uh, the knowledge. Without objective verifiability, there is no knowledge. So without uh, um, uh, a reason justified by objective um, uh, idea or uh, things and verifiable. So um, about uh, the uh, subjective feelings and objective realities and um, uh, where do anthropological imagination comes out and uh, to comprehend the uh, holistic picture of uh, the local people, uh, that's where um, the, where do anthropological imagination spring from? So we have approaches, we have perspectives, we have theories, we have uh, uh, methods, a bundle of methods and attitudes that we carry. We carry tools and techniques of data collection and uh, we have methods and we have theories and we have uh, attitudes and mindset, all these things uh, um, builds a ethnographer um, to once uh, he enters the field um, and uh, 
the, the uh, as a participant and uh, as an observer participant observer participant as a local person and a participant uh, observer as an outsider participant observer uh, how do he brings up uh, um, the, when he experienced the local life uh, local people's experiences and beliefs and uh, ongoing uh, habits and uh, customs and rituals and symbols and um, all the um, fabric of their uh, life and the the uh, the thickness of the mor morality and the notions of their virtues and the sanction, all those things. So then, then his imagination springs from uh, when he with the culmination of all these things. And anthropology, when he comes back from the field and when he tries to put together um, the meanings and uh, try to uh, do things. Uh, draft. That's where he, anthropological imagination springs from. So, um, what is the central to the ethnographic orientation fieldwork? Uh, fieldwork is the central to the ethnographic orientation, uh, which is, which is, uh, separates the uh, discipline of anthropology from all other disciplines, whether it is natural or uh, um, the social or uh, humanities from all other disciplines, anthropology uh, is, is exclusively, uh, it's a strength is a participant observation ethnography, uh, which is done in the field work on the site. So field work is the study of people uh, and of their culture in their natural behavior. Uh, <clears throat> anthropological field work has been uh, uh, characterized by the prolonged residence of the uh, investigator, his participation in and observation of the society and uh, his attempt to understand the inside view of the native peoples and to achieve the holistic view of the social um, uh, scientist. And the, uh, the publication of uh, Malinowski's uh, Argonauts of the Western Pacific in uh, 1922 uh, revealed the great potentialities of fieldwork. This study of Trobrian Islanders, among whom Malinowski had lived for, uh, for almost three years, set new standards for field workers, uh, which continue to operate. Field work can, came to mean immersion in the uh, tribal society, uh, learning uh, or whatever the society, immersion in the tribal society, uh, this uh, learning as far as possible to speak, to think, uh, see, feel, and they act as a member of its culture. And uh, at the same time, as a trained anthropologist from a different culture. Quoted from Powder Maker uh, 1969, the page number 418. So you see the field work is the central uh, to the ethnographic orientation. What is ethnography then? Uh, from a theoretical point of view, ethnography is regarded as one of the most important research tools. Uh, quoted from Bartel uh, Stockinger, uh, published in uh, 2014. It enables uh, uh, researchers to access the community members' knowledge online, which in turn helps to provide in depth insights about the consumers. Uh, the key words are consumers, online. The data available on online, uh, data about the consumers, which is already there on online. So, uh, ethnography. Uh, let me repeat. From a theoretical point of view, ethnography is regarded as one of the most important research tools. It enables researchers to find to access the community members. Uh, knowledge online, which in turn helps to provide in-depth insights about the consumers. Robert V. Cosinets, uh, uh, in his book uh, published in 2002, The Man Behind Ethnography. Uh, this is a man who coined uh, um, the Robert V. Cosinets is a man who coined the word uh, ethnography, has coined this term to provide a rich insight into consumers' interaction online. Consumers' interaction online. 
so the basic uh, business or the task of ethnography is to provide a rich insight into consumers orientation uh, which is available already on the online so the others have the other highlights online environment that provides a rigor and ethics in the field of market research this is done through the discussion of an online coffee news group where its implications also are discussed. So uh, uh, ethnography, uh, the keywords, the key jargon is online, uh, which is already uh, information available on, on the online, on the web pages uh, about the consumers and uh, the uh, and uh, the the ethnography, the world was coined uh, by um, uh, Robert V. Kojinets, and the purpose of, for which he coined this word in his own words is to provide a rich insight into consumers' interaction uh, available on the online, right? So, ethnography versus digital and uh, ethnography. Ethnography versus digital ethnography. Ethnography focuses on uh, internet users forming an online community, which is uh, highlighted from the substantial daily life. While digital ethnography only treat the digital world as a place to extend their offline data collection to complement the ethnographic research. So you use, do you observe the major difference between uh, ethnography and a digital ethnography? Ethnography focuses on internet users forming an online community, which is uh, highlighted from the substantial daily life, while digital ethnography only treat the digital world as a place to extend their offline a data collection to implement the uh, uh, ethnographic research. So what is the major difference? Uh, ethnography is a major thrust and focus is the online community, um, their interactions. Uh, whether they post the videos or their uh, uh, hashtags or wh whatever. So uh, picture, photos, or uh, their reactions, emotions, uh, wh what are uh, their feelings uh, are they expressed on the online community? Uh, whereas digital ethnography only treat the digital world as a place to extend their offline data collection to complement uh, the ethnographic research. So uh, digital ethnography, it's a major focus is people. By using digital world, it reaches people to, uh, to conduct uh, uh, the ethnography. Uh, they pose the question to collect the data, to carry the, their ethnographic endeavor. So they, they connect uh, the people live uh, through uh, and they try to understand the relationships uh, of the people with the uh, uh, digital world. So uh, another uh, difference from speaking uh, with the researchers, uh, we work with uh, ethnography is uh, typically mentioned uh, when it comes to the study of social media. Ethnography is typically mentioned when it comes to the uh, study of a social media example, monitoring hashtags on Insta in Instagram to understand behaviors and attitudes. This could also be classified as a semiotics. A an example here would be research carried out on the brand hashtag to classify brand tribes um, and uh, different uh, consumer persona, different consumer personas. Most of this occurs on already shared publicly available data. In, his, uh, in this context, uh, there is no specific screening or recruiting. Uh, it's a more general analysis of an uh, unknown cohort. 
people who are available on the online community are unknown to us and uh, we, we don't have direct connection with them uh, we don't observe their lives we don't talk to them directly through digital world uh, but uh, the data is already available on the online about their attitudes, their behaviors, their, their uh, emotions, their beliefs, or all those things, and their hashtags, and all those things. So, uh, in ethnography, is purely um, the 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 engage with the um, the data uh, available on the online, published on the online, whereas uh, the digital ethnography, uh, it. Uh, uh, is more relevant in the context of researcher studying uh, uh, specifically recruited cohort of respondents in relation to a specific topic. You see, we, we identify respondents, we identify the key informants. We use digital technologies, uh, um, uh, we enter the digital world uh, to, to interact with our respondents and the key, infor key informants to collect the required data um, related to our uh, chosen topic or the research problem. So that's where uh, digital ethnography is different from uh, ethnography. Uh, digital ethnography is more relevant in the context of a researcher studying a specific recruited cohort uh, um, of respondents in relation to a specific topic. In this example, researchers would recruit respondents and ask them to record their behaviors and attitudes uh, in relation to a particular topic or task over a period of time. This could be classified as an auto-ethnography or self-ethnography as the respondent would use a mobile um, uh, ethnography platform to capture their own behaviors using video or photos uh, and text. The data captured is digital or multimedia based uh, mostly, which allows researchers to remotely observe and analyze behaviors in a very non-invasive manner. Not bring present typically results in some advantages, especially in cultures where hospitality traditions signification alter uh, real at the rate of behaviors. So the limitation here is you are only able to see what the respondent shares with you. However, some mobile ethnography platforms allow researchers to interact using comments, push notifications, uh, which when used properly enable rapport and trust to be quickly established, which in turn results in respondents uh, sharing more data more openly, which can lead to discoveries of spontaneous behaviors and hidden uh, needs, you see. So once uh, um, uh, we are not, uh, because we are not physically present there, so uh, the intrusion question of intrusion is uh, avoided here. At the same time, um, the data which they share is limited uh, because whatever they share, that is the limitation that we have uh, to access uh, to the to observe their behavior, their attitudes, their values, their beliefs, whatever the information that we are looking for uh, uh, in the uh, to know about their culture. But whereas um, once we uh, wrap up, develop the rapo and uh, uh, enter the intimate zones, then uh, then uh, spontaneity and uh, uh, when people reactions and reactions and spontaneous expressions, uh, then we can uh, score, underscore uh, their, uh, their uh, real attitudes and the kind of uh, values they carry and uh, the reactions they express and uh, um, the hidden needs can be noted down. So what is digital ethnography? Um, then, so cyber ethnography, also known as virtual ethnography, digital ethnography, and most commonly online ethnography is an online research method that adapts ethnographic methods 
to the study of the communities and cultures created through computer mediated uh, social interaction. Uh, digital, uh, me digitally mediated social interaction. So digital ethnography uh, 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 is uh, called, some people call cyber ethnography, some people call virtual ethnography, some people uh, call the digital ethnography and most commonly online ethnography uh, is an online research method Digital ethnography is the online research method that adopts ethnographic methods to study of the communities and cultures created through computer mediated social interaction. So we interact with people through digital media or technologies. We undertake ethnography through digital technologies or um, the, uh, we enter the digital world and uh, we explore the uh, possibilities to interact uh, with people and uh, underscore their worldview and discover their worldview, map their seeking behavior and uh, note their uh, meanings and uh, uh, morals and uh, notions of uh, virtues and all those things are already in place or already in transition, whatever the continuities and discontinuities we can really uh, find out. Uh, digital ethnography is the anthropological study of the relationship between humans and digital era technology. So digital ethnography is defined here. Uh, let me repeat it. Digital ethnography is the anthropological study of the relationship between humans and a digital era technology. The field is new and thus has a variety of names with a variety of emphasis. These include techno anthropology, digital ethnography, cyber anthropology, and virtual anthropology, or some people call digital anthropology. So um, uh, this is a new field, uh, a new subdiscipline emerging, uh, digital anthropology or virtual anthropology, which studies uh, um, the, the relationship between humans and the digital era technology. What is uh, digital ethnography? Again, um, digital ethnography outlines an approach to doing uh, ethnography in a contemporary world. Uh, it uh, invites uh, researchers uh, to consider uh, how we live and research in a digital material and sensory environment. Digital ethnography outlines an approach to doing ethnography uh, in a contemporary world. It uh, invites uh, researchers to consider how we live and research in a digital, material, and sensory environment. This is not a static world or environment. Rather, it is one in which we need to know how to research in it as it develops and changes. That's why digital ethnography is assuming very important uh, uh, skill uh, and uh, we need to uh, uh, help anthropologists acquire these uh, vital skills of doing digital ethnography. <clears throat> Digital ethnography also explores the consequences of uh, the presence of digital media in shaping the techniques and processes through which we uh, practice ethnography and accounts of how the digital, methodological, practical, and theoretical dimensions of ethnographic research are increasingly intertwined. This is very important. Digital ethnography also explores the consequences of the presence of digital media in shaping the um, techniques and processes through which we practice ethnography and accounts of, for how the digital methodological, practical and theoretical dimensions of uh, ethnographic research are increasingly intertwined. <clears throat> Sarah Pink uh, has pointed out uh, some definitions are more open and others are more uh, prescriptive, as uh, Delamont says. And uh, following Karen O'Reilly, uh, he posit, we posit that ethnography is iterative and 
iterative inductive research that evolves in design through the study. Drawing on a family of methods that acknowledges the role of theory as well as the researcher's own role and that views humans as part uh, object or part uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, subjects. As an object, uh, as a subject, humans uh, as an object of study, uh, humans as a subject of study, uh, how uh, these, uh, our anthropological theories and uh, methods and uh, family of methods and researchers own uh, creative role and situational leadership and provide the, uh, the guidance and, uh, and the engage the local respondents and the key informants uh, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, collecting the data required for his purpose of uh, study. So that's where the iterative and the inductive research um, is uh, involved. So ethnography is a collaborative process. It uh, suggests uh, the uh, digital form. Uh, digital ethnography is a collaborative process. It uh, suggests that uh, digital forms of collaboration as integrated into digital ethnography research processes invite different collaborative ways of co-producing knowledge with research partners and the participants. So there are uh, digital ethnographic processes involved. There are digital ethnographic partners involved. And uh, there are digital ethnography participants, uh, key participants or informants are involved. So it is all, all uh, digital ethnography is a, a collaborative process. It suggests that a digital forms of collaboration as integrated into digital ethnography uh, research processes invite different collaborative ways of uh, co-producing knowledge. For example, um, uh, interdisciplinary approaches, um, uh, some people from uh, the other disciplines also wants to know uh, and apply the uh, digital ethnography like, uh, insight. So uh, they also work as a team with uh, anthropologically trained ethnographer. Uh, and also that, that's where the partners and the participants and the processes or uh, all these um, collaborative processes are involved. <coughs> Sorry. Digital world, uh, <clears throat> that's where we go. Uh, the, uh, this phrase is important for uh, digital ethnographers. <clears throat> the phrase uh, digital world is uh, most commonly used in when defining digital fluency and digital literacy. The digital world is the availability and use of digital tools to communicate on the internet and digital devices and smart devices and other technologies required. So the, the digital world uh, consists of the digital fluency and um, um, the, um, the communication, uh, the, um, the words, the literacy, and, um, and the digital tools for uh, to communicate on the internet, digital devices, smart devices, and other technologies. So digital space, this is another important jargon. So I understand uh, digital space as uh, the set of all um, information in a digital form. Uh, we need to get familiar with uh, this jargon when we want to engage uh, in uh, digital ethnography, we need to understand the internet language, uh, the jargon, uh, digital world and digital space. So digital space as the set of all information in digital form. Uh, people can access this information space, uh, information space uh, through digital interfaces. I use the definition of uh, space uh, since the set uh, contains both information and a representation of the people accessing. Uh, this, uh, the digital space consists of um, the representation and information. 
information about the people and the people who represent the information. Uh, these two people uh, they can be accessed in this digital space. The term digital spaces refers to what a what is displayed on the screen of a digital device. The term digital spaces refers to what is displayed on the screen of a digital device. Example, laptops, computers, tablets, or smartphones. What can be displayed in digital spaces is vast and diverse and can take countless forms. The home screen of the device and applications or apps, movies, photos, and the website all occupy digital space. So the components uh, that constitute uh, the digital space, uh, that's what we see here. Digital life. <clears throat> the term digital life stands for uh, a way of life in which uh, digital uh, technologies are an indispensable part of life. In its uh, contrasting use, the term digital life is used to distinguish between the parts of human life and uh, that take place uh, in cyberspace uh, or which are closely related to digital technologies and uh, the other areas of life that take place in real life and uh, independently of the use of digital technologies. The term digital life is uh, also used to denote the totality of aspects of uh, human existence that are uh, related to digital technologies. I repeat, the term digital life is also used to denote the totality of aspects of human existence that are related to digital technologies. In its uh, comprehensive meaning, the term digital life stands for a way of life in which digital technologies are an integral part of all aspects of human life. The term is based on the expectation that the current digital transformation will lead to digital uh, infosphere. Which, uh, <clears throat> let me repeat. The term is based on the expectation that the current digital transformation will lead to the digital infosphere being connected to the uh, NT sphere, the analog infosphere, and even the cognisphere via an increasing number of uh, interfaces. Wow, so very rich. The, in extreme cases, in such a digital world, our areas of life would be permitted by digital technologies, which can be assumed to have a formative influence on the shaping of the human way of life. The possibility of such a formative effect is conceptually reflected in the fact that in the expression digital life, quote unquote, the digital quote unquote is elevated to the prominent attribute of human existence. The possibility of human formative effect is conceptually reflected in the fact that in the expression, uh, digital life, quote unquote, um, the, the digital, quote unquote, is elevated to the prominent uh, attribute of uh, human existence. The antonym for the term digital life is the expression real life digital life and real life. And the, what is the relationship between these things? That's where um, the digital ethnographer is very curious to know. Cyberspace. So cyberspace is a global and dynamic domain subject to constant change, characterized by the combined use of electrons and the electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, whose purpose is to create, store, modify, exchange, share, and extract, use, eliminate information, and uh, disrupt physical resources. Cyberspace includes uh, physical infrastructures and the telecommunications devices that allows for the connection of technological and communication system networks and understood in the broad sense. The cyberspace, digital space, digital world, digital life, these are the key jargon. We should have a conceptual clarity 
uh, so that when we use it uh, in our uh, ex- describing description and interpretation and analysis and uh, writing the uh, about the culture uh, at the end of our project our this training we are going to come up with the uh, research problem and designing the research problem entering the uh, the our areas of interest and then conduct the digital ethnographic uh, uh, work uh, and then come back and write and publish that's where the digital ethnographic uh, training process finish uh, comes to an end so <clears throat> digital transformation was the word used uh, uh, the digital transformation refers to the fundamental change in the defining structures and the functional logic of the of a social economic political technical and cultural or uh, logical system through which the proliferation of digital information and communication technologies this digital transformation uh, we uh, we need to understand the interconnections a systemic understanding of all these things how these things are interconnected uh, and uh, how it affects uh, the real uh, human beings uh, and uh, the uh, its impact on the uh, um, in the human and uh, transform the local culture how the this digital transformation actually takes place so what are the questions that digital ethnographers are looking at um i'm going to give you a course outline and in that outline i'm i'm going to give you a bibliography uh, the textbooks and chapters for uh, general reading uh, and for your learning and uh, so that systematically uh, session after session reading and learning and reflection discussion and um, the the jargon getting familiar uh, ourselves with the concepts and perspectives and uh, the jargon of the digital ethnography so that we will be we might be thoroughly equipped to do the digital ethnography uh, so that we come up with a wonderful ethnogra- digital ethnographic masterpiece uh, we are going to publish a book together and uh, your your um, the digital ethnographic uh, research account will be there in that book as a, a chapter so that's how the training comes to an end so uh for example till now i try to explain and uh, make you understand the basics of what is ethnography what is the mindset of an ethnographer what is the task of ethnography and um, what are the um, ethnographers uh, do and all those things and after that ethnography what it actually it is what is it is uh, it's a major thrust or focus and uh, what are the differences between uh, uh, ethnography and digital ethnography after that uh, key jargon uh, digital space and digital world digital life and uh, cyber space and uh, digital transformation and uh, many other key jargons so uh, we are going to frequently use so um, digital ethnography so i have introduced basic, some basic uh, uh, things about digital ethnography what are the actual focus and uh, what do they study kind of thing so now uh, uh, <clears throat> there is a uh, uh the handbook of digital ethnography which is a textbook prescribed for your uh, study uh, during this training course so that is our textbook so uh, from the textbook i have collected um the different studies are compiled and published so the <clears throat> uh, routledge handbook of digital ethnography if you can find that book uh, you can uh, it will be very great otherwise uh, session after session i will be uh, taking uh, um, the um, uh, some posting some uh, uh, material to you content so that uh, you can be thoroughly uh, reading and uh, reflecting and uh, come up with some questions for discussion uh, for uh, upcoming sessions so what are the uh, in that book uh, um, these are the questions i have framed and um, they have asked so um, when i am reading all those things uh, um, i have framed uh, these questions so uh, the research uh, problems i have mapped here and presenting uh, the set of uh, research studies 
or published in that uh, Rotlich handbook of uh, um, digital ethnography in that uh, in the test book that is a prescribed test book for uh, one of the prescribed test book for our uh, digital ethnographic training so before we go to any tribe or non tribal um, uh, people groups uh, before we undertake any digital ethnographic study and we need to understand uh, the actual um, the basics and get familiar with this. so these are the research problems research questions uh, different research scholars of great reputation who have been engaged for the last 10 years 15 years and uh, out of their great experience uh, they have published uh, uh, their research problems or questions uh, i'm going to present to you so that <clears throat> you will have a wider understanding oh ho uh, this is the scope or this is these are the possibilities these are the areas there where we can also examine in our local context so the, the, to give that kind of idea, just I want to read their research question or research problems for you. Thank you. So what are the research, what are the questions that digital ethnographers are looking at? Uh, so the how digital environments, methods and methodologies are redefining ethnographic practice. <clears throat> to understand uh, how old concepts are impacted by digital ethnographic practice. You see, uh, because of the presence of digital environment, digital world, digital space, digital lives. So how these things, uh, how digital environments, methods, methodologies are redefining ethnographic practice. And the second question is to understand how world concepts are impacted by digital ethnographic practice. Uh, to understand how we live and act in a context that is today almost always co-constituted and, uh, and entangled uh, with the digital technologies uh, uh, content, presence, and communication. To understand how we live and act in a context that is today almost always co constituted and entangled with the uh, digital technologies, digital content, digital presence, and digital communication. So these are the research problems, the questions they're asking. How the practice of ethnography is changing due to an engagement with the digital environment. How computationalization, how computationalization shapes some of the adaptations of ethnographic methods and frameworks. How the purposes of writing as the predominant expression of ethnographic knowledge to take place, sorry, let me repeat. How, how the purposes of writing as the predominant expression of ethnographic uh, um, <clears throat> knowledge do take place so within the context of digital media. How digital ethnography does contextualizes the contemporary debates about the consequences of the digital media technologies for ethnographic practice uh, from different disciplinary vantage points. How do writing culture, a seminal text uh, in defining the politics and presence of ethnography and uh, work, field work to contextualize, how do writing culture to contextualize the new modes of ethnographic research and collaboration and uh, expression? How digital media cultures have shaped ethnography as a practice reflecting upon the changes and the continuity within the academy. How the digital media technologies in our field sites and field work represent a continuity rather than a rap rupture with the previous ethnographic practice. Let me repeat this question. How the digital media technologies in our field sites and the field work uh, represent continuity rather than rupture uh, with the previous ethnographic practice? Important question. How online practices make visible the notion of the field site as a network? 
that is meaningfully constructed through the ethnographer's experience. Wow. So what are the different forms of sociality? What are the different forms of sociality that are being mediated through digital media cultures, especially social media? Important question. How social media is shaping and being shaped by small communities around the world? What are the possibilities of social media to move beyond kinship or place-based social ties to develop new relationships on these uh, digital media platforms? What are the possibilities of social media to move beyond kinship or place-based social ties uh, and relational affinities to develop new relations? Very interesting. How transnational family practices do are uh, being transformed uh, in the light of the ubiquitous presence of communication, what she calls uh, polymedia, the other calls polymedia environments. So transnational family practices. So the, uh, the, some families uh, live abroad in other countries and uh, some families live here and their relations how they're being transformed in the light of the uh, polymedia environments. What are the limits of digital media technologies to transform who, when, and how people are seen and heard? Very interesting question. What are the limits of digital media technologies to transform who, to transform when, and to transform how people are seen and heard? How a small community of commercial lifestyle micro celebrities, lifestyle micro celebrities is engaged in self branding by using a range of social media to transform themselves from mere bloggers to influencers, using their visibility and voice for economic gain. how digital media cultures may re replicate or transform existing offline forms of uh, inequality and uh, participation. What are these spaces uh, digital ethnography can provide for, for speculation and for creative series of changing approaches, theories and probes? What are the, let me repeat, what are these spaces digital ethnography uh, can provide for speculation and for creative series of changing approaches, theories, and props? What is the future like for digital ethnography? There are pros and cons to digital ethnography versus in-person ethnography. However, in a world where we are digitizing more and more of our lives and emotions, either publicly via social networks or privately over closed messaging platforms or private social networks, both uh, ethnography and digital ethnography will play a huge role in helping researchers better understand behaviors at a greater scale and lower cost. So uh, <clears throat> more and more digitizing processes are involved in our lives and emotions, either publicly or via social networks, or privately or closed messaging platforms or private social networks. Uh, both ethnography uh, and digital ethnography will play a huge role in helping researchers better understand uh, behaviors at a greater scale and uh, at lower cost. So <clears throat> thank you. I have uh, done with my presentation. Uh, the purpose of this presentation is to help you understand the basics of uh, uh, ethnographic principles and in practice. And uh, at the same time, an ethnography, what actually it means and digital ethnography, what are the um, important uh, things that we need to familiar with. And uh, 
<clears throat> so, uh, yeah, we are mo we are going to. <clears throat> I'm going to give you the uh, material content. Um, I will post it uh, into your email accounts at the same time to in our uh, deep hang digital ethnography practicing action group. So the, in that uh, group also I will post uh, the materials, the articles, the chapters. Um, we are going to be vigorously uh, uh, read and learn and uh, think and uh, uh, develop our questions and develop our interesting areas of investigation. Uh, uh, at the end of our uh, uh, this uh, theoretical training, are equipping you for the digital uh, uh, ethnography uh, 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 <clears throat> so that uh, after this uh, theory part the training is over, uh, then when we are ready for uh, in going, uh, selecting, uh, we, we, will, we will also train you. Professor S.B. Roy, sir, and myself will be giving you training uh, in uh, the developing the research problem and the research uh, tools, uh, data collecting tools and, uh, and uh, everything you need um, uh, with the collaboratively. Uh, it is not that we know everything. Um, some of the experts are also there, assistant professors, associate professors, and, uh, um, and the practitioner, development practitioners. Uh, 50 people have registered for this course uh, on uh, digital ethnography for tribal sustainable livelihoods. So Professor uh, S.B. Reiser will uh, mentor uh, the uh, participants uh, in uh, taking to the tribal communities and connecting with them and um, uh, have uh, interactions. And, uh, and you are given freedom to choose your own research problem, whether it is a tribe or uh, the uh, geographical site or people group. You will be given 100% freedom. Uh, once this uh, theoretical uh, training part is over, then we enter into the field work, uh, ethnographic uh, practice. So uh, uh, during this uh, theoretical problem, this thing, we will finalize our research problem and uh, the research, uh, the data collecting tools and uh, the methodology part, everything will get ready. After that, uh, you will be given uh, freedom to choose your research problem. After that, we will you will be given three months time uh, to do field work and uh, at your convenience at um, the, uh, on your interesting topic and which we are going to, you are going to, you, you are encouraged to write the ethnography uh, and uh, the, bring it back uh, to together we will publish and um, the, publish a book on the digital ethnography for uh, development of tribals and non-tribals. So uh, the <clears throat> so that is the uh, the outcome. That is the out that will be the outcome of this digital ethnographic uh, uh, training uh, for development, uh, whether it is tribal or non-tribal or urban spaces, whatever. So dear participants, uh, I respect your uh, commitment and uh, uh, encourage uh, other, fr other friends to follow these uh, recordings. If you are not present, uh, if you have some other engagement uh, that clashed with this event, um, uh, but uh, you are encouraged uh, and uh, I, it is very, uh, I encourage you to take it serious so that uh, you will uh, um, really learn and uh, do some uh, digital ethnography. Thank you. It's time for uh, questions or uh, uh, any suggestions or any uh, other uh, things to discuss. Uh, dear Shankaran and uh, Dr. Kaysom and Dr. Lahru Mary. Um, yeah, do you have any questions? Please unmute your mics. Uh, within uh, two, three days, I will be, uh, maybe next week, I will be posting uh, this uh, uh, 
uh, this course outline. I'm sorry for uh, late. Uh, the course. deal in the WhatsApp group. Yes, in the WhatsApp. The title of the book. What? The you said you there is a prescribed textbook for uh, digital ethnography. Yes. Which is required for our course. So can yeah. you just post that uh, title of the textbook? Yeah, I have already prepared the five five test books and a few articles the in the course description and uh, process and sessions and uh, the bibliography uh, all these things. So I will post it. Um, uh, the, today, the book which I quote, two books I, I have quoted um, from the powder maker. Uh, there is one book. Uh, there is uh, another book by Rotlidge Handbook of uh, uh, Digital Ethnography. Uh, there is another book, uh, test book, uh, Sage, Sage Handbook for Digital Ethnography is also there in our test books. Uh, uh, for example, let me... No, no, no. Uh, uh, sorry, it is not there. So uh, I will post it uh, maybe uh, within two, three days, right? Uh, OK, sir. OK, sir. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, sir, uh, I, I have a sir. Yes. So actually, um, any any other literature theory, any other lit uh, review of literature or any other theory has to be read, sir. Like Adam Cooper or uh, any other any other important anthropologist, additional. Yes, uh, Sarah Pink, uh, digital ethnography. Uh, I have a book um, uh, uh, that also is there in our uh, the test books for the course, and uh, the virtual anthropology by another other. That test book is also with me. So uh, there are some articles also there. So all these uh, things uh, I will uh, give you. Uh, I will give you so that uh, you can master it and uh, get thoroughly uh, go through it. And uh, because the future is going to be dominated by digital ethnography. So if you are uh, the uh, if you are thoroughly equipped with the required the skills in the digital ethnography, then you will be leading leader in this area particularly in our country uh, from this part of the planet. So I want to compliment something importantly, sir. Please. Actually, actually, some days ago I was reading about Gregory Bateson, sir, because of, along with Margaret Mead, Gregory Bateson was a very important uh, uh, technical figure, actually, in, in, in anthropology, especially. And Gregory Bateson had spoken about the idea of cybernetics. Cybernetics. He had spoken about this particular theoretical point. And even Adam Cooper, Adam Cooper had also spoken about the utilization of use of the word culture uh, for uh, for even inhuman activities within a culture. He in the book called Culture and Anthropologist Account, uh, written by Adam Cooper, he has criticized the word culture being uh, used in a in a very uh, what do we say like uh, conspicuous way, very conspicuous way, which which should not be used in that way. It should be dropped, dropped in some places, and it should be reiterated again. The word culture should be reiterated. That's what he spoke, sir. Adam Cooper, actually. Oh, that is interesting. Uh, 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 that means uh, you are reading, uh, you are getting acquainted with the. No, you see uh, the knowledge, uh, the journey of the true truth, the anthropological journey to discover the truth, is a process. Uh, uh, a century, more than a century. Uh, our anthropologists uh, have worked hard and uh, enter the different uh, remote uh, communities and uh, and also the different spaces where our uh, people they there they go and they study it. they try to create knowledge uh, about the human nature and human cultures and human life and uh, they want to find uh, the truth about uh, humanity and their workings and their beings. So it's a process. Eh? Again, the truth about the culture, uh, the evolving, the different theories, uh, different uh, the knowledge is created and uh, it is evolving process. And uh, we are here to uh, see that some mature, some better, some more convincing, uh, more uh, uh, the promising, more uh, uh, truth assuring uh, conceptions of culture or whatever the, whatever the stuff that we are looking at. 
So we are in that process. We will do the hard work. We will be thoroughly equipped and we will try our best. Uh, because, because Tim Wingold also in one of his lectures had spoken something else. He said that culture is not what just we know or nature is not what we just inhabit. He had spoken about this interesting uh, contrast of existence actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, even uh, uh, Dan Sperber, who's spoken about the symbolic process of agriculture actually, mm -hmm. is also a very important figure in interpretative anthropology. So mm -hmm. digital anthropology can extend into that actually, because we are reading about farming communities. Yes. Dan Sperber is an extraordinary uh, thing, sir. Actually, he's an extraordinary person to really be referred to, sir. And I suggest, sir, that a theory of social structure, a, a better material of in simple language can be, should be given, sir, actually. Because anthropological theories is always theories of culture only, actually. It's not theories of social structure. Yeah, we will, we will have one session on that, anthropological theories for digital ethnography. Uh, how the, these things will be helpful, in what way? for the data collection and understanding the culture, understanding the function and structure and uh, institutions and uh, values and uh, business and uh, the different sectors and the different uh, theoretical departures and new departures. All those things uh, we will comprehensively try to uh, present uh, in one session or two uh, so that uh, we can, our, our participants can have a better understanding of how these anthropological knowledge and theories the approaches and perspectives and attitudes and the prescriptions uh, and the disciplinary uh, the boundaries uh, can really uh, help uh, um, the uh, discover the worldview and uh, um, uh, come up with the, the excellent uh, um, accounts of the people and study. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Really good. Uh, any more questions? Uh, uh, I have already, I am in the process of uh, uh, identifying the right books for this uh, topic. Uh, I have already uh, uh, found books and uh, now getting ready uh, in the sense uh, to go into the uh, core, core of the uh, training. Uh, till now, uh, Professor S.B. Raisar have uh, connected us to different tribal groups through uh, digital technologies and uh, we have a, a little bit we had interaction with the different tribal groups and we have uh, opportunity to ask a few questions uh, uh, to have a four test for to have a four test but uh, uh, based on that a few questions and uh, often our interaction we cannot produce any uh, the trustworthy dependable and a truthful account of, uh, of the tribal life or culture no. So uh, that's why we encourage you to have a three months time uh, minimum to undertake a, a research project. And we will, in the meantime, in the meantime, we will give you, uh, as uh, Shankaran uh, said, uh, the theoretical inputs are required to all the participants, how the, the theories are uh, helpful in understanding the local communities and in, in, in interpreting their cultures, uh, what are the theoretical frameworks and uh, um, the perspectives and approaches and tools, techniques, all those things uh, we will uh, give training, uh, uh, have a discussion, clarification of doubts so that uh, we will have uh, group discussions and we will have frequent sessions. Uh, weekly, maybe two or three also, uh, if possible, uh, we will go uh, if we uh, really uh, are uh, sufficient that uh, material we will give you um, to read. And also I am, if you observe, I'm posting some videos to get uh, here and there uh, some important ideas. Uh, from the um, uh, YouTube, YouTube's, uh, which I am posting, so that uh, you, pay, if you pay attention, you will get to the um, uh, key concepts, uh, some br bright, um, the right ideas, uh, to uh, enable us our understanding, um, to broaden our understanding of what uh, digital ethnography actually means. So. <clears throat> uh, I, yeah, I, 
uh, I'm looking for uh, your feedback because uh, now slowly uh, getting into the, uh, uh, the core of the training um, basics. Uh, and also I will be conducting some uh, exam means a simple objective type exams uh, online. So the, uh, to test your, uh, the grasp of the concepts, I will frame objective type uh, questions within no time. You can uh, uh, answer it and send it, uh, uh, upload it. So, so that yeah, we will assess your learning uh, progress um, till the end. And also we will write in the, uh, we will uh, send uh, the reports to, because uh, we have uh, uh, the advisors of our Anthropological Association for Humankind is the association, AAH. For, for, their, um, for this organization, we have a governing council. We have an advisory council. Very reputed professors, uh, retired professors are there in our governing council. They are all, uh, uh, I am accountable to them. Uh, uh, they are looking for the best masterpiece of, uh, to get published as an outcome uh, of this training process. And uh, they're also going to come in between uh, to deliver some lectures <clears throat> uh, uh, on important aspects uh, to prepare you for the field, uh, for the digital ethnography. So uh, the journey has begun. So we are in the process of learning new things. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to post the, the, the jargon, uh, very, which is important for uh, understanding and uh, um, the engaging in the digital ethnography and writing, writing and publishing. So the, those jargons should be um, thoroughly um, um, learned and uh, used in your communication and discussion so that uh, our group will emerge as a premier uh, digital ethnographic uh, group for development policy. Uh, in the future, another course we are going to design on the public policy and, uh, and the health kind of thing. So even uh, this digital ethnography can be used for examining the public policy and the public health uh, in this pandemic uh, time. So if you can really uh, uh, take up some um, interesting topics uh, um, to well, conduct the uh, digital ethnographic uh, um, um, uh, research study uh, on the public uh, policy and uh, uh, health uh, and the uh, uh, what are the current uh, situation kind of thing. I'm not suggesting, just I am uh, giving you a hint uh, so that um, Different people have different interests and different uh, curiosity. I mean, uh, those, those freedom is given, assured. At the same time, uh, important things, uh, pressing problems and contemporary issues. Uh, be, because ours is an uh, applied oriented institution. Uh, this is a virtual institution, International Institute of uh, Anthropological Applications. We have international governing council members from Kansas University and from uh, Texas University and medical school, uh, uh, um, uh, medical university and uh, and University of South Florida. And also uh, one speaker is going to come from uh, the Netherlands. Uh, um, so different uh, international speakers are also will contribute their part uh, in uh, applying the anthropological knowledge and methods to address the contemporary challenges, the problems and issues. So uh, how this uh, digital ethnographic training uh, is useful in addressing the, in studying the contemporary issues and in addressing the contemporary issues, how this digital ethnography will be helpful. Uh, that's what uh, we are going to, uh, that the compilation of our research studies and uh, publication and that book will be uh, a, a kind of a, a reference book for public policy makers. At the same time, um, the people who are interested in the development practice. So for this course will be very useful for people who will be engaged uh, uh, thoroughly in the digital ethnography, uh, particularly uh, of applied orientation uh, because uh, it will lessen our costs 
because uh, we study re remote people and uh, uh, with uh, the digital technologies and uh, yeah, very promising uh, field and uh, very interesting. And at the same time, there are some limitations uh, in the upcoming uh, sessions. I will be helping you understand uh, the uh, in-depth uh, important issues of digital ethnography, how to do it and uh, what are the th theories, what are the uh, uh, different uh, authors and different uh, uh, scholars are saying. And so that uh, uh, on this international virtual platform, uh, you will be uh, uh, given enough, uh, uh, we will try our best to give you en enough attention and uh, care uh, to train in all possible ways uh, to equip you to engage in digital ethnographic research uh, and, um, uh, and publication. Thank you all. Um, uh, is there any person to ask any question or any clarification? Uh, So thank you for uh, listening patiently. This is wonderful. I'm encouraged. So thank you so much. God bless you. So I'm, I'm going to end this meeting, dear ones. Have a nice time. Uh, I will send the materials and uh, uh, we'll be uh, ongoing. I will be posting some videos and uh, some materials and ongoing learning process will be uh, taken care and encouraged. Thank you. <laughs>